Hey YouTube, welcome to this installment of the Evian blog. So, excuse a bit of the angle on things, things have changed a little bit here in the workshop and we're busy moving things around. But today we're going to take a look at a review of a slightly different multimeter. Uh, well, not different, it's um, from a brand Hellerman. Uh, well, the company Hellerman that uh, supply them Hellerman Titan here in South Africa. It is the Bremen Toptronic. So, we're going to take a look at this meter now on the bench and see what it's all about and pretty much compare it to some of the other meters that we use. So let's get straight into the review, not to waste you guys time. Right, so today we're taking a look at the Bryman Toptronic TBM251. Um, these meters are supplied in South Africa by Hellerman Titan, um, manufactured in Taiwan. This is an older meter that I've had. Um, I picked it up for quite a good price. But what we're going to do now is we're going to compare this little guy against the likes of the TBM812, uh, which is one of the more professional true RMS meters, and of course the Fluke 289, and see how it stacks up. I must tell you, and first, at first look on this little 251 multimeter, is it very much resembles its bigger cousin, the TBM. 8 series, uh, let's zoom out a little bit as you can see there, the only difference is it's a lot smaller. Now a few things to note, big differences between the two, the build and construction is pretty much very similar, um, the rubber holster is a very similar design, obviously being smaller it won't be as thick as the rubber holster on the bigger series meters, on the 8 series meters. Um, another thing to note is the 8 series have the dual display, Whereas these, uh, five, these two series meters have a single display. So there's no displaying two bits of information at a time. Now, the 251, from what I see, uh, has a very similar sort of rating, but not as highly rated. These uh, 8 series meters are rated at 1000 volts CAD 4 on volts. Okay, now again here you'll see 300 volts CAD 4 on volts ohms. Now, You'll have 600 volts CAT3, so that'll be on par with your sort of fluke entry level stuff and your basic fluke meters. Um, of course, you'll have your milliamps jack. Now, they have swapped these amps and the milliamps jacks around on this meter. I'm not sure why they've done that. But for all intents and purposes, functionality wise, you'll notice you've got your select button, you've got your range button, you've got your Hertz release button over here. This one doesn't do that function. Well, it does, but it's a second function using the select button. And then you've got your hold function again, but you also have your electromotive force field, electrical field uh, testing, which is the same as the TBM829 series meters, um, such as my other TBM829. But we'll go through all those functionality and features of this meter now, and you guys can tell me what you think. So, for first up, we're going to compare it to the TBM812 and see how the two uh, sort of read voltages, how quickly the continuity testers respond, etc. And just do a comparison between these two and then we'll compare it to the Fluke 289. Okay, so on to some basic functionality testing. We're going to take a look now at volts DC on both of these meters, but just straightforward volts DC as a comparison. I'm going to use one set of test leads to rule out any sort of errors uh, that might come up. And the first thing is first, we're going to jack in here to our test power supply and we're going to do a reading on this meter. So as you can see 5.068 5.068 volts. Now we're going to move that across to this little guy 5.06970 So okay, so far so good. They're pretty much pretty close. I'm happy with that. So 69, there we go. It's um, literally a millivolt or two difference so that's good enough for me now we're going to change that across and we're going to go to more reference voltage we're going to see 5.142 we've just varied it a little bit 5.142 5.143 again one millivolt difference hell that's um, not much to, to even worry about so let's go down to a lower voltage something in the range of, let's see, plug in over here so you guys can see where we are, 1.244 volts, okay, so 1.244 on this little guy, 1.244, 243, again 1 millivolts to spot on, no problems at all. So the last test voltage I'm going to use here is around 12, 
and we're going to see how that does a direct comparison. Let's just jack this up to around 12 volts. Let's do a reading. 11.87 volts. Okay, 11.87, 11.86. So this little guy over here, 11.87 again, spot on, 11.86. I'm very happy with that result. We're getting more or less the same thing. So from that, I mean, we could go higher in voltages, etc., but I don't think it's necessary. From that basic conclusion, we can see that the volts DC is pretty much on par between these two meters. So um, there's a few more things left to look at. One of them we can take a look at is the volts AC. Right, so what we're going to do now, and again, here's where the dual display on the one meter comes into its own as compared to the other meter. So there we've got a reading of the mains here, 222.6, 50 hertz. All right. So now, carefully, we're going to bring this out, and we're going to jack it in over here. 224, 222.6. Now bearing in mind this does change slightly, but still well within reference, so happy days with that. Now, a few more things we can look at. Well, we have the leads in this meter over here. Is we can look at the continuity tester and three, two, one. As you can see, it is latching. <coughs> it is latching and it is relatively fast. It's not quite on par with say the fluke or something like that, but it is relatively quick, good enough for most intents and purposes. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a few resistance tests on this meter over here. Um, I'm now going to take uh, a resistance measurement using this guy and then compare it to this guy over here. Um, now a few things to note, this one has diode, resistance, continuity, volts, amps, but it doesn't have things such as capacitance, etc. Not a big deal. Uh, I fully don't believe in using capacitance on a multimeter anyway. So let's take a look at a few of those components. Okay, so first thing in the stable, we've got our 10 ohm 5 watt resistor, which we like to do reference measurements with, um, just because it's around and it does the job. So we're going to first do a reference measurement with the 812. We're expecting about 10.2, 10.3. Okay, we're measuring 10.4. Oh, there we go, 10.3, that's what we expect. So 10.3 ohms. Now we're going to do a measurement on the 251. And I expect around the same. Ten point one, ten point two. Okay, it's close. Um, not quite the same level, but it's close. So I'm quite happy with that. No problems at all. Now where things do always get interesting is with lower value resistors. So, as we know, the Fluke uh, 289 is a king when it comes to these things. So, what we'll do now is we're going to just check our lead resistance. I get about 0 0.4. So, let's go on to this resistor. Are we getting 0 0.4? Well, that's kind of like, okay, there we go, 0 0.6 or whatever. When you're measuring down low resistances like this, these meters do battle. So, let's just see, out of interest sake. Yeah, it's going to take strain. These are very low values, 0.47 ohms, etc. Um, so yeah, it's not probably not even worth checking them out. But, let's have a look at a MPN type transistor or something similar if I can find one in here and um, we usually have a couple lying around and it seems like our normal lying around batch are no longer lying around uh, which is a bit of a sad state of affairs but we do have a diode so let's check out a diode junction um, using both meters so we're going to head over to the 812 I'm going to head over to here to diet test. I'm going to check reverse, nothing. And forward, 0.532. Now, as you can see, it's pretty quick. Now, on the five, uh, sorry, the 251, it's a second function. We're just going to check the forward. 
0.53529, okay, well there we go, 529, there we go, nice, and reverse, obviously nothing, so okay, nothing wrong with that, so far so good, so far both meters are pretty much on par, so, if you're looking for a nice reliable little molding meter, I reckon this 251 is starting to look better and better, especially for the money, but, um, Let's take a bit of a closer look at the build and construction of this meter and then also do a few current measurements and see how it stacks up. So what we're going to do um, for those measurements we're going to put it up against the Fluke 289 as a reference um, and see how it measures current etc as compared to the 289. Okay, so I didn't use the Fluke, I'm just using the 812 because the uh, batteries were flat in the 289 so I need to charge them. As you can see, we're just doing a bit of a low current test over here at uh, around 96, 97 milliamps. And as you can see, they're two pretty close. We're going to bring it up. We're not going to go too high on the currents. Go to about a half an amp or 500 milliamps roughly. As you can see, we're still sitting pretty close together. No problems at all there. Now this load will do about 2 amps, but I'm only going to go up to about an amp, amp and a half. And as you can see, we're still sitting for more or less in the same place. So, yeah, there's absolutely no problems at all when it comes to measuring DC current. It's pretty much on par with the 812 in that aspect. And, um, yeah, let's uh, not worry too much about milliamps, microamps, etc. But um, I'm pretty keen to talk a little bit about the screen and the build of this meter um, at this point in this review. Now just something I wanted to point out about jacks, you've got jack alarms over here. As you know this is quite dangerous, um, so if you were to try and go to volts now and measure volts with this plugged into the amp jack, you could create a potential dead short flash incident, whatever the case may be. So now if you go across to anything, it's basically going to tell you that there's a problem, very loud and clear, until you pull your lead out. So it does have a bit of a jack alert system which is really cool. It just lets you know if you're plugged in unsafely and if you could potentially create a problem. So yeah, that's quite a nice feature again. Also available on the bigger models, but it's quite nice to have it on a, a smaller version. So let's talk a little bit now about this meter. Okay, so just a little bit of a speech. As you can see, the meter is in the traditional sort of shape of the Ryman, um, what we're used to, but it's not the same size. Um, the build and the buttons feel quite nice. The selector switch is very nicely made, in my opinion. There is a bit of a, if you look there from this sort of angle, the screen is quite dim, but from that angle it's quite good. So it depends on that. Um, it's quite well laid out, I must say. It does have a PC connectivity option. A little hook here for hanging it, etc. And it does have a small tilting bale, which might not be the best, but it'll get the job done. Um, again, you can see the meters made in Taiwan along with all the other Bryman equipment. And yeah, it's, it's quite nice. It feels quite nice. It's nice and compact. It's basically like a baby version of the Bryman we all know and love, which is really cool. So yeah, and the screen is nice and big. So I find no issues with this meter. So if you guys are looking for something and you're not too concerned about capacitance and all the other crap that goes into multimeters nowadays, and you're just looking for a dedicated good quality meter, the TBM251, definitely something to look at. Um, what we're going to do now just to finish off this video is go and take a look at this meter on the internet and see what they talk about it and see what the spec reads on this meter. And then uh, we'll conclude with just my conclusion overall. Alright, we're just going to take a look at that EMF function or EF function. So you basically hold to activate it. Now it's detecting the mains from this. So I'm going to take this away a little bit. And you'll see as I bring it in. You can see how it gets stronger. Not sure exactly where the sensor is, but it's somewhere here in the head, and that basically allows you to see if there's live mains or anything like that around in the area. So yeah, quite a usable function of the meter, uh, definitely, and uh, possibly something you could use when you're busy checking if things are live or dead, and you just want a quick reference to see. I don't much rely on those sort of things. I prefer to do a probe test, 
to check for dead um, instead of using those but they are handy for just sort of quick reference like do we have power here or whatever the case may be um, it could save a life somewhere down the line so yeah not a bad meter overall so let's go into my conclusion about this meter hey guys so just reading some of this uh, information on this meter over here uh, my screen recording software is not working I'll sort that out for the next video but um, General specification is a 6,000 count, 3 and 5 over 6 digit multimeter. Uh, update rate is 5 times per second nominal. The 24 segment bar graph updates at 40 times per second. Okay, they say max, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that is pretty much standard. I'm not going to go through all the other bits and pieces, but uh, the 251 is an average sensing, so it's not a true RMS sensing multimeter. Uh, some of the other information about it is that it requires two AAA 1.5 volt batteries. The power consumption typical is around 3.5 milliamps. Um, the low battery alarm kicks in at about 2.3 volts. Uh, the APO timing, ideal for 34 minutes. Uh, it has some basic functionality. We're going to go through your AC voltage is 1% accurate plus 5 digits um, then DC voltage we've got 0.4% plus 5 digits uh, typical and that's at 60 millivolts and 600 millivolts then it's 6 volts to 1000 volts 0.2% plus 3 digits uh, auto check this meter phones and have that functionality um, then on resistance we're showing between 600 and 600 K ohms 0.5% plus 4 digits uh, 6 mega ohms 0.7% and 60 mega ohms 1.2% um, again reasonable not too bad um, the logic level hurts mm, not a function I've tried on the meter but something we can possibly look at in the future Diode test, 1 volt range, 1% uh, accurate. Okay, DC current, again, we've got various accuracy levels at different levels, but ranging from 0.5% plus 5 to 1.8% plus 6. AC current, around 1% plus 3 to 1.8% plus 6, depending on the range. Now, the non-contact EF detection, which I'm going to show you guys next on this meter, uh, 20 volts tolerance is 10 volts to 36 volts 55 volts tolerance 23 days so this is basically the sensitivity 440 is between 250 and 1000 volts and it will basically um, give you like a bar graph with the audible beep tone proportional to the field strength so that's quite interesting we'll take a look at that now quickly before we close off on the review and give my last bit of an impression of how this meter functions okay so my basic conclusion is of, the, of this little TVM 251 is that it's a fantastic meter for the money. Um, if you're looking for something basic, small, compact to use on the bench um, as a hobbyist or even a professional electrician or something like that, it's definitely something you should be taking a look at. In my opinion, it is one of the better budget meters that I've seen um, comparing to sort of the major tech MT24s, etc. But uh, having a few pluses up on the MT24s and, and so on and so forth. But in so saying, my conclusion, if you're looking for a nice little meter and you're willing to spend a little bit of money, definitely go out and get yourself one of these. You definitely won't be sad or disappointed in the meter because it is a fantastic piece of kit. And uh, all around just uh, these guys, Bryman, Toptronic, etc. They make some really nice kit um, that's very underrated in the industry, unfortunately. But their brand is growing. Uh, people are getting to recognize these brands a little bit more. And of course, with marketing comes more great equipment. So guys, keep watching the space. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Take care for the rest of the week and I'll see you next time.